Hi, welcome to our brand new Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Certificate Exam Dummy Question. In this video, we are going to discuss all the dummy questions of the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Exam. I'm your host Kushal Mehta from UpDegree and let's get started. You have an on-premises network that contains several servers. You plan to migrate all the servers to Azure. You need to recommend a solution to ensure that some of the servers are available if a single Azure data center goes offline for an extended period. What should you include in the recommendation? And here are the options. Option A. Fault tolerance. Option B. Elasticity. Option C. Scalability. Option D. Low latency. The correct answer is Option A. Fault tolerance. Explanation Fault tolerance is the ability of the system to continue to function in the event of a failure of some of its components. In this question, you could have servers that are replicated across data centers. Availability zones expand the level of control. You have to maintain the availability of the applications and data on your VMs. Availability zones are unique physical locations within an Azure region. Each zone is made up of one or more data centers equipped with independent power, cooling and networking. To ensure resiliency, there are minimum of three separate zones in an enabled regions. The physical separation of availability zones within a region protects applications and data from data center failures. With availability zones, Azure offers industry best 99.99% .99 VM uptime SLA. By architecting your solutions to use replicated VMs in zones, you can protect your applications and data from the loss of a data center. If one zone is compromised, then replicated apps and data are instantly available in another zone. Next question. What are two characteristics of the public cloud? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Note, each correct selection is worth one point. And here are the options. Option A, dedicated hardware. Option B, unsecured connections. Option C, limited storage. Option D, metered pricing. Option E, self-service management. And the correct answer is option D, metered pricing and option E, self-service management. Section, describe cloud concepts. Explanation, with the public cloud, you get pay-as-you-go pricing. You pay only for what you use, no capex costs. With the public cloud, you have self-service management. You are responsible for the deployment and configuration of the cloud resources such as virtual machines or websites. The underlying hardware that hosts the cloud resources is managed by the cloud provider. Incorrect answers. Option A. You don't have dedicated hardware. The underlying hardware is shared so you could have multiple customers using cloud resources hosted on the same physical hardware. Option B. Connections to the public cloud are secure. Option C. Storage is not limited. You can have as much storage as you like. Next question. Your company plans to migrate all its data and resources to Azure. The company's migration plan states that only platform as a service solutions must be used in Azure. You need to deploy an Azure environment that meets the company migration plan. Solution You create an Azure App Service and Azure SQL databases. Does this meet the goal? Option A Yes. Option B No. The correct answer is Option A Yes. Section Describe cloud concepts. Explanation Azure App Service and Azure SQL databases are examples of Azure PWS solutions. Therefore, this solution does meet the goal. Next question. Your company plans to migrate all its data and resources to Azure. 
The company's migration plan states that only platform as a service solutions must be used in Azure. You need to deploy an Azure environment that meets the company migration plan. Solution: You create an Azure app service and Azure virtual machines that have Microsoft SQL Server installed. Does this meet the goal? Option A: Yes. Option B: No. The correct answer is option B: No. Section: Describe cloud concepts. Explanation: Azure App Service is a PWAS platform as a service. However, Azure Virtual Machines are an IWAS infrastructure as a service. Therefore, this solution does not meet the goal. Next question: Your company plans to migrate all its data and resources to Azure. The company's migration plan states that only platform as a service solutions must be used in Azure. You need to deploy an Azure environment that meets the company migration plan. Solution: You create an Azure app service and Azure storage accounts. Does this meet the goal? And here are the options. Option A: Yes. Option B: No. The correct answer is option B: No. Section: Describe cloud concepts. Explanation: Azure App Service is a PWAS service platform as a service. However, Azure Storage Accounts are an IWAS service infrastructure as a service. Therefore, this solution does not meet the goal. Next question: Your company hosts an accounting application named App One that is used by all customers of the company. App One has low usage during the first three weeks of each month, and very high usage during the last week of each month. Which benefit of Azure Cloud Services supports cost management for this type of usage pattern? And here are the options: Option A, high availability; Option B, high latency; Option C, elasticity; Option D, load balancing. The correct answer is. Option C, elasticity. Section, describe cloud concepts. Explanation: Elasticity in this case is the ability to provide additional compute resource when needed and reduce the compute resource when not needed to reduce costs. Auto scaling is an example of elasticity. Elastic computing is the ability to quickly expand or decrease computer processing, memory. and storage resources to meet changing demands without worrying about capacity planning and engineering for peak usage typically controlled by system monitoring tools elastic computing matches the amount of resources allocated to the amount of resources actually needed without disrupting operations with cloud elasticity a company avoids paying for unused capacity or idle resources and doesn't have to worry about investing in purchase or maintenance of additional resources and equipment next question you plan to migrate a web application to azure the web application is accessed by external users you need to recommend a cloud deployment solution to minimize the amount of administrative effort used to manage the web application what should you include in the recommendations option a software as a service option b platform as a service option c infrastructure as a service option d database as a service and the correct answer is option b platform as a service explanation azure app service is a platform as a service offering that lets you create web and mobile apps for any platform or device and connect to data anywhere in the cloud or on premises App service includes the web and mobile capabilities that were previously delivered separately as Azure websites and Azure mobile services. Next question. You have an on-premises network that contains 100 servers. You need to recommend a solution that provides additional resources to your users. The solution must minimize capital and operational expenditure costs. What should you include in the recommendation? and here are the options 
a complete migration to the public cloud. Option B, an additional data center. Option C, a private cloud. Option D, a hybrid cloud. And the correct answer is option D, a hybrid cloud. Section, describe cloud concepts. Explanation. A hybrid cloud is a combination of a private cloud and a public cloud. Capital expenditure is the spending of money upfront for infrastructure such as new servers. With a hybrid cloud, you can continue to use the on-premises servers while adding new servers in the public cloud. Azure, for example. Adding new servers in Azure minimizes the capital expenditure costs as you are not paying for the new servers, as you would if you deployed new servers on-premises. Incorrect answers. Option A. A complete migration of 100 servers to the public cloud would involve a lot of operational expenditure, the cost of migrating all the servers. Option B. An additional data center would involve a lot of capital expenditure, the cost of the new infrastructure. Option C. A private cloud is hosted on on-premises servers to this would involve a lot of capital expenditure, the cost of the new infrastructure to host the private cloud. Which service provides serviceless computing in Azure? And here are the options. Option A. Azure Virtual Machines. Option B. Azure Functions. Option C. Azure Storage Account. Option D. Azure Dedicated Hosts. And the correct answer is Option B. Azure Functions. Explanation. Azure Functions provide a platform for serverless code. Azure Functions is a serverless compute service that lets you run event-triggered code without having to explicitly provision or manage infrastructure. Next question. You have an Azure subscription named Subscription 1. You sign into Azure portal and create a resource group named RG1. From Azure documentation, you have the following command that creates a virtual machine named VM1. You need to create VM1 in subscription 1 by using the command. Solution. From the Azure portal, launch Azure Cloud Shell and select Bash. Run the command in Cloud Shell. Does this meet the goal? And here are the options. Option A. Yes. Option B. No. And the correct answer is Option A. Yes. Explanation. The command can be run in the Azure Cloud Shell. The Azure Cloud Shell is a free interactive shell. It has common Azure tools pre-installed and configured to use with your account. To open the Cloud Shell, just select Try it from the upper right corner of a code block. You can also launch Cloud Shell in a separate browser tab by going to Next question. Your company has several business units. Each business unit requires 20 different Azure resources for daily operation. All the business units require the same type of Azure resources. You need to recommend a solution to automate the creation of the Azure resources. What should you include in the recommendations? And here are the options. Option A. Azure Resource Manager Templates. Option B. Virtual Machine Scale Sets. Option C. The Azure API Management Service. Option D. Management Groups. And the correct answer is Option A. Azure Resource Manager Templates. Explanation. You can use Azure Resource Manager Templates to automate the creation of the Azure resources. Deploying resource through templates is known as Infrastructure as Code. To implement infrastructure as code for your Azure solutions, use Azure Resource Manager Templates. The template is a JavaScript object notation file that defines the infrastructure and configuration for your project. The template uses declarative syntax, which lets you state what you intend to deploy without having to write the sequence of programming commands to create it. In the template, you specify the resources to deploy and properties for those resources. Next question. A team of developers at your company plans to deploy and then remove 50 customized virtual machines each week. 
30 of the virtual machines run Windows Server 2016 and 20 of the virtual machines run Ubuntu Linux. You need to recommend which Azure service will minimize the administrative effort required to deploy and remove the virtual machines. What should you recommend? And here are the options. Option A. Azure Reserved Virtual Machines Instances Option B. Azure Virtual Machine Scale Sets Option C. Azure Dev Test Labs Option D. Microsoft Managed Desktop And the correct answer is Option C. Azure Dev Test Labs Explanation Dev Test Labs creates labs consisting of pre-configured bases or Azure Resource Manager templates. By using Dev Test Labs, you can test the latest version of your applications by doing the following tasks. Quickly provision Windows and Linux environments by using reusable templates and artifacts. Easily integrate your deployment pipeline with Dev Test Labs to provision on demand environments. Scale up your load testing by provisioning multiple test agents and create pre-provisioned environments for training and demos. Next question. A support engineer plans to perform several Azure management tasks by using the Azure CLI. You install the CLI on a computer. You need to tell the support engineer which tools to use to run the CLI. Which two tools should you instruct the support engineer to use? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Note, each correct selection is worth one point. And here are the options. Option A, Command Prompt. Option B, Azure Resource Explorer. Option C, Windows PowerShell. Option D, Windows Defender Firewall. Option E, Network and Sharing Center. And the correct answers are, Option A, Command Prompt. And option C, Windows PowerShell. Explanation. For Windows, the Azure CLI is installed via an MSI, which gives you access to CLI through the Windows command prompt or PowerShell. Next question. You have an Azure environment. You need to create a new Azure virtual machine from a tablet that runs the Android operating system. Solution. You use PowerShell in Azure Cloud Shell. Does this meet the goal? And the options are Option A, yes. Option B, no. And the correct answer is Option A, yes. Explanation Azure Cloud Shell is a browser-based shell experience to manage and develop Azure resources. Cloud Shell offers a browser-accessible pre-configured shell experience for managing Azure resources without the overhead of installing, versioning, and maintaining a machine yourself. Being browser-based, Azure Cloud Shell can be run on a browser from a tablet that runs the Android operating system. Next question. You have an Azure environment. You need to create a new Azure virtual machine from a tablet that runs the Android operating system. Solution. You use the Power Apps portal. Does this meet the goal? And the options are Option A, yes. Option B, no. And the correct answer is Option B, no. Explanation Power Apps lets you quickly build business application with little or no code. It is not used to create Azure virtual machines. Therefore, this solution does not meet the goal. Power Apps portals allow organization to create websites which can be shared with users external to their organization either anonymously or through the login provider of their choice like LinkedIn, Microsoft account, other commercial login providers. Next question. You have an Azure environment. You need to create a new Azure virtual machine from a tablet that runs the Android operating system. Solution. You use the Azure portal. Does this meet the goal? And here are the options. Option A, yes. Option B, no. And the correct answer is, option A, yes. Explanation. The Azure portal is a web-based unified console that provides an alternative to command line tools.
With the Azure portal, you can manage your Azure subscription using a graphical user interface. You can build, manage and monitor everything from simple web apps to complex cloud deployments. Create custom dashboards for an organized view of resources. Configure accessibility options for an optimal experience. Being web-based, the Azure portal can be run on a browser from a tablet that runs the Android operating system. Next question. Azure Databricks is an Apache Spark-based analytics service. Instructions. Review the underlying text. If it makes the statement correct, select No change is needed. If the statement is incorrect, select the answer choice that makes the statement correct. And here are the options. Option A. No change is needed. Option B. Azure Data Factory. Option C. Azure DevOps. Option D. Azure HD Insight. And the correct answer is Option A. No change is needed. Explanation Azure Databricks is an Apache Spark based analytics platform. The platform consists of several components, including MLIB. MLIB is a machine learning library consisting of common learning algorithms and utilities, including classification, regression, clustering, collaborating filtering, dimensionality reduction, as well as underlying optimization primitives. Next question. Which Azure service provides a set of version control tools to manage code? And here are the options. Option A. Azure Repos. Option B. Azure DevTest Labs. Option C. Azure Storage. Option D. Azure Cosmos DB. Correct answer is Option A. Azure Repos. Explanation. Azure Repos is a set of version control tools that you can use to manage your code. Incorrect answers. Option B. Azure Dave Test Labs creates labs consisting of pre-configured bases or Azure Resource Manager templates. These have all necessary tools and software that you can use to create environments. Option D. Azure Cosmos DB is Microsoft's globally distributed multimodal database service. Next question. You have a virtual machine named VM1 that runs Windows Server 2016. VM1 is in the East US Azure region. Which Azure service should you use from the Azure portal to view service failure notification that can affect the availability of VM1? And here are the options. Option A. Azure Service Fabric. Option B. Azure Monitor. Option C. Azure Virtual Machines. Option D. Azure Advisor. And the correct answer is Option C. Azure Virtual Machines. Explanation. In the Azure Virtual Machines page in the Azure portal, there is a named Maintenance Status. This column will display service issues that could affect your virtual machine. A service failure is rare, but host server maintenance that could affect your virtual machine is more common. Azure periodically updates its platform to improve the reliability, performance, and security of the host infrastructure for virtual machines. The purpose of these updates ranges from patching software components in the hosting environment to upgrading networking components or decommissioning hardware. You attempt to create several managed Microsoft SQL Server instances in an Azure environment and receive a message that you must increase your Azure subscription limit. What should you do to increase the limits? And here are the options. Option A. Create a service health alert. Option B. Upgrade your support plan. Option C. Modify Azure policy. And Option D. Create a new support request. And the correct answer is Option D. Create a new support request. Explanation Many Azure resources have quote limits. The purpose of the quota limits is to help you control your Azure costs. However, it is common to require an increase to the default quota. You can request a quota limit increase by opening a support request. 
In the support request, select service and subscription limits for the issue type. Select your subscription and the service you want to increase the quota for. For this question, you would select SQL database managed instance as the quote type. Next question. Your company plans to move several servers to Azure. The company's compliance policy states that a server named FinServer must be on a separate network segment. You are evaluating which Azure services can be used to meet the compliance policy requirements. Which Azure solution should you recommend? And here are the options. Option A. A resource group for FinServer and another resource group for all the other servers. Option B. A virtual network for FinServer and another virtual network for all the other servers. Option C. A VPN for FinServer and a virtual network gateway for each other server. Option D. One resource group for all the servers and a resource lock for FinServer. And the correct answer is Option B. A virtual network for FinServer and another virtual network for all the other servers. Explanation Networks in Azure are known as virtual networks. A virtual network can have multiple IP address spaces and multiple subnets. Azure automatically routes traffic between different subnets within a virtual network. The question states that FinServer must be on a separate network segment. The only way to separate FinServer from the other server in networking terms is to place the server in a different virtual network to the other servers. Next question. You plan to map a network drive from several computers that run Windows 10 to Azure Storage. You need to create a storage solution in Azure for the planned map drive. What should you create? And here are the options. Option A. An Azure SQL database. Option B. A virtual machine data disk. Option C. A file service in a storage account. Option D. A blobs service in a storage account. And the correct answer is Option C. A file service in a storage account. Explanation. Azure Files is Microsoft's easy-to-use cloud file system. Azure file shares can be seamlessly used in Windows and Windows Server. To use an Azure file share with Windows, you must either mount it, which means assigning it a drive letter or mount point path or access it via its UNC path. Unlike other SMB shares you may have interacted with, such as those hosted on a Windows Server, Linux Samba Server, or NAS device. Azure file shares do not currently support Kerberos authentication with your Active Directory or Azure Active Directory identity, although this is a feature we are working on. Instead, you must access your Azure file share with the storage account key for the storage account containing your Azure file share. A storage account key is an administrator key for a storage account including administrator permissions to all files and folders within the file share you are accessing. And for all file shares and other storage resources, blobs, queues, tables, etc. contained within your storage account. Next question. Your company plans to migrate all its network resources to Azure. You need to start the planning process by exploring Azure. What should you create first? And here are the options. Option A. Subscription. Option B. A resource group. Option C. A virtual network. Option D. A management group. And the correct answer is Option A. A subscription. Explanation. The first thing you create in Azure is a subscription. You can think of an Azure subscription as an Azure account. You get billed per subscription. A subscription is an agreement with Microsoft to use one or more Microsoft Cloud platforms or services for which charges accrue based on either a per-user license fee or on cloud-based resource consumption. Microsoft's Software as a Service-based Cloud Offering Office 365, Intune slash EMS and Dynamics 365 charge per-user license fees. 
Microsoft's platform as a service and infrastructure as a service cloud offerings charge based on cloud resource consumption. You can also use a trial subscription, but the subscription expires after a specific amount of time or consumption charges. You can convert a trial subscription to a paid subscription. Organizations can have multiple subscriptions for Microsoft's cloud offerings. Next question. Which Azure service should you use to collect events from multiple resources into a centralized repository? And here are the options. Option A. Azure Event Hubs. Option B. Azure Analysis Services. Option C. Azure Monitor. Option D. Azure Stream Analytics. And the correct answer is Option A. Azure Event Hubs. Explanation. Azure Event Hubs is a big data streaming platform and event ingestion service. It can receive and process millions of events per second. Data sent to an event hub can be transformed and stored by using any real-time analytics provider or batching or storage adapters. Azure event hubs can be used to ingest, buffer, store and process your Steam in real-time to get actionable insights. Event Hubs uses a partition consumer model, enabling multiple applications to process the Steam concurrently and letting you control the speed of processing. Azure Event Hubs can be used to capture your data in near real time in an Azure Blob Storage or Azure Data Lake Storage for long term retention or micro batch processing. Next question You plan to deploy several Azure virtual machines. You need to ensure that services running on the virtual machines are available if a single data center fails. Solution: You deploy the virtual machines to two or more scale sets. Does this meet the goal? And here are the options. Option A. Yes. Option B. No. And the correct answer is Option B. No. Explanation. This answer does not specify that the scale set will be configured across multiple data centers. So this solution does not meet the goal. Azure Virtual Machine Scale Sets let you create and manage a group of load balanced VMs. The number of VM instances can automatically increase or decrease in response to demand or a defined schedule. Scale Sets provide high availability to your applications and allow you to centrally manage, configure and update many VMs. Virtual machines in a scale set can be deployed across multiple update domains and fault domains to maximize availability and resilience to outages due to data center outages and plan or unplanned maintenance events. Next question. You need to be notified when Microsoft plans to perform maintenance that can affect the resources deployed to an Azure subscription. What should you use? And here are the options. Option A. Azure Monitor Option B. Azure Service Health Option C. Azure Advisor Option D. Microsoft Trust Center And the correct answer is Option B. Azure Service Health Explanation Azure Service Health provides a personalized view of the health of the Azure services and regions you are using. This is the best place to look for service impacting communications about outages planned maintenance activities and other health advisories because the authenticated service health experience knows which services and resources you currently use. You plan to migrate several servers from an on-premises network to Azure. What is an advantage of using a public cloud service for the servers over an on-premises network? And here are the options. Option A. The public cloud is owned by the public, not a private corporation. Option B. The public cloud is a crowdsourcing solution that provides corporation with the ability to enhance the cloud. Option C. All public cloud resources can be freely accessed by every member of the public. Option D. The public cloud is a shared entity whereby multiple corporations each use a portion of the resources in the cloud. And the correct answer is Option D. The public cloud is a shared entity whereby multiple corporations each use a portion of the resources in the cloud. Explanation 
The public cloud is a shared entity whereby multiple corporations each use a portion of the resources in the cloud. The hardware resources, servers, infrastructure, etc. are managed by the cloud provider. Multiple companies create resources such as virtual machines and virtual networks on the hardware resources. Incorrect answers. The public cloud is not owned by the public. In the case of Microsoft Azure, the cloud is owned by Microsoft. Option B. The public cloud is not a crowdsourcing solution. In the case of Microsoft Azure, the cloud is owned by Microsoft. Option C. It is not true that public cloud resources can be freely accessed by every member of the public. You pay for a cloud subscription and create accounts for your users to access your cloud resources. No one can access your cloud resources until you create user accounts and provide the appropriate access permissions. Next question. In which type of cloud model are all the hardware resources owned by a third party and shared between multiple tenants? And here are the options. Option A. Private. Option B. Hybrid. Option C. Public. And the correct answer is Option C. Public. Explanation. Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud are three examples of public cloud services. Microsoft, Amazon and Google own the hardware. The tenants are the customers who use the public cloud services. Next question. You have 1000 virtual machines hosted on the Hyper-V hosts in a data center. You plan to migrate all the virtual machines to an Azure pay-as-you-go subscription. You need to identify which expenditure model to use for planned Azure solution. Which expenditure model should you identify? And here are the options. Option A. Operational. Option B. Elastic. Option C. Capital. Option D. Scalable. And the correct answer is Option A. Operational. Explanation. One of the major changes that you will face when you move from an on-premises cloud to the public cloud is the switch from capital expenditure, buying hardware, to operating expenditure, paying for services as you use it. This switch also requires more careful management of your costs. The benefit of the cloud is that you can fundamentally and positively affect the cost of a service you use by merely shutting down or resizing it when it's not needed. Next question. Your company has an on-premises network that contains multiple servers. The company plans to reduce the following administrative responsibilities of network administrators. Backup application data, replacing failed servers hardware, managing physical server security, updating server operating systems, managing permissions to shared documents. The company plans to migrate several servers to Azure virtual machines. You need to identify which administrative responsibilities will be eliminated after the planned migration. Which two responsibilities should you identify? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Note. Each correct selection is worth one point. And here are the options. Replacing failed server hardware. Option B. Backing up application data. Option C. Managing physical server security. Option D. Updating server operating systems. Option E. Managing permissions to shared documents. And the correct answer is. Option A. Replacing failed server hardware. And option C. Managing physical server security. Explanation. Azure virtual machines run on Hyper-V physical servers. The physical servers are owned and managed by Microsoft. As an Azure customer, you have no access to the physical servers. Microsoft manages the replacement of failed server hardware and the security of the physical servers, so you don't need to. Incorrect answer? Option B. Microsoft have no control over the applications you run on the virtual machines. Therefore, it is your responsibility to ensure that application data is backed up. Option D. Microsoft do not manage the operating systems you run on the virtual machines. Therefore, it is your responsibility to ensure that operating systems are updated. 
option A. Microsoft have no control over the shared folders you host on the virtual machines. Therefore, it is your responsibility to ensure that folder permissions are configured appropriately. As a service, resources in Azure. Which resource is an example of IAAS? And here are the options. Option A, an Azure web app. Option B, an Azure virtual machine. Option C, an Azure logic app. Option D, an Azure SQL database. And the correct answer is option B. Explanation. An Azure virtual machine is an example of infrastructure as a service. Azure web app, Azure logic app, and Azure SQL database are all examples of platform as a service. Next question. To which cloud models can you deploy physical servers? And here are the options. Option A. Private cloud and hybrid cloud only. Option B. Private cloud only. Option C. Private cloud, hybrid cloud and public cloud. Option D. Hybrid cloud only. And the correct answer is option A. Private cloud and hybrid cloud only. Explanation. A private cloud is on-premises so you can deploy physical servers. A hybrid cloud is a mix of on-premise and public cloud resources. You can deploy physical servers on-premises. Next question. You have 50 virtual machines hosted on-premises and 50 virtual machines hosted in Azure. The on-premises virtual machines and the Azure virtual machines connect to each other. Which type of cloud model is this? And here are the options. Option A. Hybrid. Option B. Private. Option C. Public. And the correct answer is option A. Your company plans to migrate all its data and resources to Azure. The company's migration plan states that only platform as a service solutions must be used in Azure. You need to deploy an Azure environment that meets the company migration plan. Solution. You create Azure virtual machines. Azure SQL databases and Azure storage accounts. Does this meet the goal? And here are the options. Option A, yes. Option B, no. And the correct answer is option B, no. Explanation. Platform as a service is a complete development and deployment environment in the cloud. PWAS includes infrastructure, servers, storage and networking, but also middleware, development tools, business intelligence services, database management systems, and more. PWAS is designed to support the complete web application lifecycle, building, testing, deploying, managing, and updating. However, virtual machines are example of infrastructure as a service. IWAS is an instant computing infrastructure provisioned and managed over the internet. Next question. Your company plans to deploy several custom applications to Azure. The applications will provide invoicing services to the customers of the company. Each application will have several prerequisite applications and services installed. You need to recommend a cloud deployment solution for all the applications. What should you recommend? And here are the options. Software as a service. Option B. Platform as a service. Option C. Infrastructure as a service. And the correct answer is infrastructure as a service. Explanation. Infrastructure as a service is an instant computing infrastructure provisioned and managed over the internet. The IAAS service provider manages the infrastructure while you purchase, install, configure and manage your own software. Incorrect answers. Option A. Software as a user service allows user to connect to and use cloud-based apps over the internet. Common examples are email, calendaring, and office tools. In this scenario, you need to run your own apps and therefore require an infrastructure. Option B. Platform as a service is a complete development and deployment environment in the cloud.
PWS includes infrastructure, servers, storage and networking, but also middleware, development tools, business intelligence services, database management systems and more. PWS is designed to support the complete web application lifecycle, building, testing, deploying, managing and updating. Next question. An Azure region contains one or more data centers that are connected by using a low latency network. Instructions. Review the underlying text if it makes the statement correct. Select no changes needed if the statement is incorrect. Select the answer choice that makes statement correct. And here are the options. No change is needed. Option B is found in each country where Microsoft has a subsidiary office. Option C can be found in every country in Europe and Americas only. Option D contains one or more data centers that are connected by using a high latency network. And the correct answer is option A. No change is needed. Explanation A region is a set of data centers deployed within a latency defined parameter and connected through a dedicated regional low latency network. Microsoft Azure currently has 55 regions worldwide. Regions are divided into availability zones. Availability zones are physically separate locations within an Azure region. Each availability zone is made up of one or more data centers equipped with independent power, cooling and networking. Next question. You plan to deploy several Azure virtual machines. You need to ensure that services running on the virtual machines are available if a single data center fails. Solution: You deploy the virtual machines to two or more availability zones. Does this meet the goal? And here are the options. Option A, yes. Option B, no. And the correct answer is option A, yes. Explanation. Availability zones expand the level of control. You have to maintain the availability of the applications and data on your VMs. An availability zone is physically separate zone within an Azure region. There are three availability zones per supported Azure region. Each availability zone has a distinct power source, network and cooling. By architecting your solution to use replicated VMs in zones, you can protect your apps and data from the loss of data centers. If one zone is compromised, then replicated apps and data are instantly available in another zone. One of the benefits of Azure SQL Data Warehouse is that high availability is built into the platform. Instructions. Review the underlying text. If it makes the statement correct, select no change is needed. If the statement is incorrect, select the answer choice that makes the statement correct. And here are the options. Option A. No change is needed. Option B. Automatic scaling. Option C. Data compression. Option D. Versioning. And the correct answer is Option A. No change is needed. Explanation. Azure Data Warehouse, now known as Azure Synapse Analytics, is a PWS offering from Microsoft. As with all PWS services from Microsoft, SQL Data Warehouse offers an availability SLA of 99.9%. Microsoft can offer 99.9% .9 availability because it has high availability features built into the platform. Next question. You plan to deploy several Azure virtual machines. You need to ensure that the services running on the virtual machines are available if a single data center fails. Solution. You deploy the virtual machines to two or more regions. Does this meet the goal? Option A. Yes. Option B. No. And the correct answer is Option A. Yes. Explanation. By deploying the virtual machines to two or more regions, you are deploying the virtual machines to multiple data centers. This will ensure that the services running on the virtual machines are available 
If a single data center fails, Azure operates in multiple data centers around the world. These data centers are grouped into geographic regions, giving you flexibility in choosing where to build your applications. You create Azure resources in defined geographic regions like West US, North Europe, or Southeast Asia. You can review the list of regions and their locations. Within each region, multiple data centers exist to provide for redundancy and availability. Next question. You plan to restore 20 terabyte of data in Azure. The data will be accessed infrequently and visualized by using Microsoft Power BI. You need to recommend a storage solution for the data. Which two solutions should you recommend? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Note. Each correct selection is worth one point. And here are the options. Option A, Azure Data Lake. Option B, Azure Cosmos DB. Option C, Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Option D, Azure SQL Database. Option E, Azure Database for PostgreSQL. And the correct answer is, Option A, Azure Data Lake. And Option C, Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Explanation. You can use Power BI to analyze and visualize data stored in Azure Data Lake and Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Azure Data Lake includes all of the capabilities required to make it easy for developers, data scientists, and analysts to store data of any size and shape and at any speed, and do all types of processing and analytics across platforms and languages. It removes the complexities of ingesting and storing all your data while making it faster to get up and running with batch, streaming, and interactive analytics. It also integrates seamlessly with operational stores and data warehouses so that you can extend current data applications. Next question. You need to identify the type of failures for which an Azure availability zone can be used to protect access to Azure services. What should you identify? And here are the options. A physical server failure. Option B, an Azure region failure. Option C, a storage failure. And option D, an Azure data center failure. And the correct answer is option D, an Azure data center failure. Explanation. Availability zones expand the level of control. You have to maintain the availability of the applications and data on your VMs. An availability zone is a physically separate zone within an Azure region. There are three availability zones per supported Azure region. Each availability zone has a distinct power source, network, and pooling. By architecting your solutions to use replicated VMs in zones, you can protect your apps and data from the loss of a data center. If one zone is compromised, then replicated apps and data are instantly available in another zone. Next question. You plan to deploy several Azure virtual machines. You need to ensure that the services running on the virtual machines are available if a single data center fails. Solution. You deploy the virtual machines to two or more resource groups. Does this meet the goal? And here are the options. Option A, yes. Option B, no. And the correct answer is option B. Explanation. A resource group is a logical container for Azure resources. When you create a resource group, you specify which location to create the resource group in. However, when you create a virtual machine and place it in the resource group, the virtual machine can still be in a different location, different data center. Therefore, creating multiple resource groups, even if they are in separate data centers, do not ensure that the services running on the virtual machines are available if a single data center fails. Next question. You plan to deploy several Azure virtual machines. You need to ensure that the services running on the virtual machines are available if a single data center fails. Solution. You deploy the virtual machines to a scale set. Does this meet the goal? 
And here are the options. Option A, yes. Option B, no. And the correct answer is option B, explanation. This answer does not specify that the scale set will be configured across multiple data centers, so this solution does not meet the goal. Azure Virtual Machine Scale Sets let you create and manage a group of load balanced VMs. The number of VM instances can automatically increase or decrease in response to demand or a defined schedule. Scale sets provide high availability to your applications and allow you to centrally manage, con configure, and update many VMs. Virtual machines in a scale set can be deployed across multiple update domains and fault domains. To maximize availability and resilience to outages due to the data center outages and planned or unplanned maintenance events. Next question. Resource groups provide organization with the ability to manage the compliance of Azure resources across multiple subscriptions. Instruction. Review the underlying text. If it makes the statement correct, select no changes needed. If the statement is incorrect, Select the answer choice that makes the statement correct. And here are the options. Option A, no change is needed. Option B, management groups. Option C, Azure policies. Option D, Azure app service plans. And the correct answer is option C, Azure policies. Explanation. Azure policies can be used to define requirements for resource properties during deployment and for already existing resources. Azure policy controls properties such as the types or location of resources. Azure policy is a service in Azure that you use to create, assign, and manage policies. These policies enforce different rules and effect over your resources. So those resources stay compliant with your corporate standards and service level agreements. Azure policy meets these needs by evaluating your resources for non-compliance with assigned policies. All data stored by Azure policy is encrypted at rest. For example, you can have a policy to allow only a certain SKU size of virtual machines in your environment. Once this policy is implemented, new and existing resources are evaluated for compliance. With the right type of policy, existing resources can be brought into compliance. Next question. Your company plans to migrate to Azure. The company has several departments. All the Azure resources used by each department will be managed by a department administrator. What are two possible techniques to segment Azure for the departments? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Note, each correct selection is worth one point. And here are the options. Option A, multiple subscriptions. Option B, multiple Azure Active Directory, Azure AD directories. Option C, multiple regions. Option D, multiple resource groups. And the correct answer is, option A, multiple subscriptions. And option D, multiple resource groups. Explanation. An Azure subscription is a container for Azure resources. It is also a boundary for permission to resources and for billing. You are charged monthly for all resources in a subscription. A single Azure tenant, Azure Active Directory, can contain multiple Azure subscriptions. A resource group is a container that holds related resources for an Azure solution. The resource group can include all the resources for the solution or only those resources that you want to manage as a group. To enable each department administrator to manage the Azure resources used by that department, you will need to create a separate subscription per department. You can then assign each department administrator as an administrator for the subscription to enable them to manage all resources in that subscription. Next question. You have an Azure environment that contains multiple Azure virtual machines. You plan to implement a solution that enables the client computers on your on-premises network to communicate to the Azure virtual machines. You need to recommend 
which Azure resources must be created for the planned solution? Which two Azure resources should you include in the recommendation? Each correct answer presents part of the solution. Note, each correct selection is worth one point. And here are the options. Option A, a virtual network gateway. Option B, a load balancer. Option C, an application gateway. Option D, a virtual network. Option E, a gateway subnet. And the correct answer is, option A, a virtual network gateway and option E, a gateway subnet. Explanation. To implement a solution that enables the client computers on your on-premises network to communicate to the Azure virtual machines, you need to configure a VPN, virtual private network, to connect the on-premises network to the Azure virtual network. The Azure VPN device is known as virtual network gateway. The virtual network gateway needs to be located in a dedicated subnet, the Azure Virtual Network. This dedicated subnet is known as Gateway Subnet and must be named Gateway Subnet. Note, a virtual network, answer D, is also required. However, as we already have virtual machines deployed in Azure, we can assume that virtual network is already in place.